All right, I have something to admit. When we hired Dan Campbell, I didn't want Dan Campbell. I wanted Robert Salah. Here, here's me when Robert Salah was hired. Jets? The Jets beat us to this guy? The Jets? That's me. The it's Jets. The Jets beat us to our guy. The Jets. Oh, my God. And I wasn't alone. Sporting News ranked Salah the number one hire of that offseason within coaches and, and ranked Dan Campbell seventh out of seven. But today, Dan Campbell came out, proved not only me wrong, but the United States of America and everybody who's ever doubted him that he is, was, is, slash was the guy for Detroit with today's win. Let's get into it. Welcome back to another Detroit Pierce podcast. Make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you like and subscribe. It's today. If you like and subscribe today and today only, it's completely and totally free. If you comment that you liked and subscribed and you send me a screenshot uh, on any of my social platforms, which is in the description below on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter, I will send you either A, a picture of my dog, or B, give you a personalized thank you. Uh, and this is the one time I will ever say this because there's going to be millions of videos after this. That if you come back and find this video and you find this clip and you still send it to me and you share this clip with me, I will give it to you. This means like five years from now, if you happen to stumble back onto this video and send me this screenshot or screen set screen thing or or this clip on audio and podcast, future me, this is me forcing you to send a personalized thank you or a picture of my dog. All right, Detroit Lions, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Did we make Zach Wilson look amazing with 315 yards put on us? Yeah, we did. Did the offense stall out and not look as good as in previous games? Yeah, it did. But let me tell you something. That's the third best defense in the NFL you just went up against. It, I mean, what are we talking about? That's as good, like, that is a gutsy, gutsy win. Good play calling, aggressive play calling, the going for it on fourth and goal at the beginning of the game, which then turned into a punt return touchdown. That turned out to be great. The fourth down play with two minutes to go, that turned out to work. I mean, it's guts on top of guts. Dan Campbell has it, and that's what you need in order to win the NFL, especially when you're playing from behind in a deal where you need to win out in order to make the playoffs. Dan Campbell gets the path, and he understands how to make the playoffs this year. He proves it time in and time out. In the last three games, he has proven that these games just mean more to him than anything else. He keeps proving it each and every single week, and it's hard to hate him for that. Like I said at the very big beginning in the cold open, I doubted Dan Campbell at the beginning. Me, along with literally everybody else. He showed today why we invested so much. He showed today why the Ford family invested so much into him. Hard to be mad about that. All right, let's talk about the let's talk about the Lions. Six and one in their last seven. We're peaking at the right time. If you listen to the sights and sounds video that the Lions produced earlier this week, that's what they talked about. You could hear an audio clip of them. We're peaking at the right time. We're peaking at the right time. They're peaking at the right time. Six and one in their last seven. There is not a single team in the NFL that wants to come and to come to Detroit and play them. Nobody wants to play us right now. The Bills barely got out of here. There's not a single team that would want to play us right now. And the reason why, in everybody's craft on Jared Goff, everybody doesn't like Jared Goff. I get it. I get it. But look, he gets it done. It's not pretty. It's not beautiful. It's good. All right? It's a winning formula. It works. Him and Ben Johnson are on the same page making this work. It's hard to be upset about that. The offense is working, AG's figured out the defense, and the defense is only going to get better the more we invest in it and the more we give it good young players like Hutchinson, uh, Kirby Joseph, and Rodrigo. It's only getting better. Did you see Okora today when he first came back? This is Okora's first game back, and would he have two sacks? I mean, 
we have the pieces to not only make the playoffs this year, but to build upon that and make playoffs for the next five years if we do it correctly. That's exciting. This is the most exciting Detroit Lions team we've had in years. Not only because of what we're producing right now, it's because of what we can see in the future. Speaking about the future, let's talk about Jared Goff. We talk about it every week. Every week. Because it's such an interesting conversation. I have a bunch of Vikings fans that are texting me and being like, your guys' situation reminds me of so much of Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is too good to get rid of, but not, it is too good to get rid of and not, and, and bad enough to dream of, a ne of the next quarterback. That's kind of where Jared Goff is. You're sitting there dreaming of who could be better, but then you watch him week in and week out, and you don't want to get rid of him because he's too good. That's an interesting problem to have. Next year, he's going to be a, the 11th highest paid quarterback in the NFL. You're telling me you're getting a top 15 quarterback for the 11th most money? Seems like a pretty good deal to me. At times, I, I sit there and I look at him. There's a ball that he underthrows Jamison Williams, and I'm like, God. He just can't throw that long ball. And then he throws anything between 15 and 0 yards, and he looks like Joe Montana. It's unbelievable how frustrating Jared Goff can be at times. But, hey, guess what? We're 6-1 and one in our last seven, and if we win the next three, we're going to be 9-1 and one in our last ten. Complain about that a little bit. I dare you. It's as good as it gets. I just feel like I'm a broken record. I'm a, I feel like I'm a broken record when it comes to how good we are right now and what our path to making the playoffs look like. Currently, as I'm speaking, I'm speaking in the very middle of the uh, Sunday night football game. As of right now, 50-38 uh, has us at a 42% chance. And no matter if we if new, uh, if the Giants win or the Commanders win, we're at a 41% chance. That's pretty freaking good. It's not the best, but we know what our path is. If we win out, we have a 90. I want. I just want to get this correct. One more click. We have a 96% chance of making the playoffs if we win out. The future is in our hands. We just have to go out and get it. The commanders have, listen to what the commanders and the Giants have. The commanders have at San Francisco, lost. Cleveland at home, not easy. Dallas at home, not easy. Giants have uh, at Minnesota. Not easy. Indianapolis at home. Easy if you can beat them in the in the in the second half. At Philadelphia, that's a loss. This is the Seahawks have. At Kansas City, loss. Jets at home. Clearly not easy. And the Los Angeles Rams at home. I hope they win that game. But the path is in our hands. Oh my God. Isn't that just amazing? That's just amazing. It's just crazy. Dan Campbell said in his uh, in the locker room. If you watch the Detroit Lions on YouTube, they show the they show the uh, they show the locker room celebration. He said, "Look, I told you this is a six game season, and we're three wins away." He gets it. He knows how to get to these guys. He knows after the Bills game, we still have a path. We just got to win the whole thing. But he also knows that this isn't the game to celebrate. Let's beat Carolina next week. And look at me. Look at me in my eyes, all right? I won't lie. I live here in Phoenix, Arizona. I won't lie. I thought about my financials today. Why do you ask? Because I'm sitting here thinking about the Lions making it to the Super Bowl. That's how hot they are. I'm figuring out my financials, and we're still two months away. We're still six games away. But do you do you blame me? The NFC is weak. You, you believe in the Eagles? They haven't beaten many good teams. We beat the Vikings. We can beat anybody right now. Why not us? Why not us? Whew. God, I'm so excited. It's so exciting just being a Lions fan. Who would have ever thought that I'd be able to say that? I have people texting me, Packers, uh, Vikings, uh, Cardinals fans. Everybody's texting me and being like, oh my God. Are you kidding me? It's amazing. They're and I'm watching the Commanders Giants game. I just tweeted this out. There is not a single person in America who's watching the Commanders and the Giants right now and not thinking to themselves, "God, we're gonna get these guys or the Lions? Give me the Lions! At least they're entertaining." I don't think there's anybody in America that's genuinely rooting against us. And I like being that team. I love being that team. All right, let's move on before I have 
make my brain explode. Red Wings. On Tuesday night, the broadcast sh showed a graphic of Kubelik, uh, Perron, uh, Cobbs, and Sherratt. They have 86 points this year. We're getting 86 points from these four. That's the most in the NHL from newcomers. Okay? I understand that we've lost our last five. I get it. I understand. I get it. But look. Believe. This isn't the team. I've, I've said this since the beginning of the season. This is not the team to make the playoffs. If they're going to make the playoffs, they're going to make it like the eight or the seven seed. The two wild card or the one wild card. Whatever you want to say. And they're going to get beat in the first round. Or maybe they may have a miracle win the first round. And then they lose in the second. This is not the Stanley Cup winning team. But the foundation, the foundation is there. And that's what's clear. That's what you want. So I have some hope for the Red Wings. All right? It's rough right now. I'm not going to lie. Live stream on Wednesday for the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit the bell so you can uh, watch, so you can get a notification to watch it. The foundation is there. That's what's important. Don't be don't be out on this team just yet. Understand that every win is a miracle and every win is great for the future. That's all you need to get. I love it. I love it. All right, let's talk about the Pistons. Hey, they won this week. All right, let's just ha let's just call a spade a spade. They since Cade Cunningham has been out, let's celebrate the wins and celebrate when they cover. They won this week against Charlotte. And they covered against the Nets and barely lost the Nets at home. All right. But let's hit the let's hit the tankathon. Let's go to tankathon.com backslash mock underscore draft. Uh let's hit the lottery. Let's see what we get. We have the second best odds. Lottery's hit. This is the third straight week that we finished with the fifth pick. Brandon Miller of Alabama. I watched him earlier this week against Gonzaga. He is the real deal. And if we would get Brandon Miller of Alabama, I knew this was going to happen. I was ready for this one. If we get Brandon Miller, I would put him second on my big board as of right now, right behind Wimbayama. Honestly, I just think he is the best fit for what the Pistons need next. All right, Tigers. I'm glad they haven't done anything. I've been looking. I, I know I've kind of joked about it and stuff, but I'm glad they haven't done anything because – at least now throughout the summer, I won't have hope in the Tigers. You know what I'm saying? You can't tell me that adding Justin Turner, adding like Joey Gallo, Ben Attendi, Michael Brantley, like the, like why have we not done anything? It just sucks because if you add a couple pieces, it feels like you would have been able to win the AL Central. I mean, if you would have gotten Dansby Swanson, Justin Turner, and uh, who's the other guy that I, Cody Bellinger? It would have been forty-five million dollars that the Tigers would have had to pay just next year, and with those three, you automatically become the favorites to win the AL Central. And the Tigers have just decided not to do that, which is a very interesting move. But hey, what do I know? Did Justin Turner Tucker get a uh, just? Did Justin Turner get a bad team deal? Uh, do I think the Red Sox got screwed by paying him for two years? Yeah, I'd only pay him for one year if I was him. But you can't tell me the Bellinger deal was bad. You can't tell me the Dansby Swanson deal was bad. We're not in on either one of those. I kind of sound like I want to be a Cubs fan, but honestly. But my dad brings up an interesting point. He told me, he has intel. I don't know. I, I looked this up. I couldn't find it, but let's just say, all right? My dad told me that Scott Harris had a wedding this weekend. If you were to get a microphone, it was open mic night at Scott Harris's wedding, and you and the microphone just happens to land in your lap, what would you say? Because you have to say something quickly. Because by the time they figure out that you have the mic, they're going to get you out of there. So for me, what I'd say, I would look Scott Harris in the face on his wedding night and say, Scott, please tell me who's going to play third base. Just tell me that. Because right now, I have no idea. Just tell me what, who's playing third base. You got any plan? And by that point, by the time I said plan, I would have been tackled and escorted out of the wedding. But somebody's got to tell me something. Scott Harris on Monday needs to like stand up on the podium and be like, hey, this is our plan. This is why I haven't done my job for the last three weeks. Somebody's got to tell me something. All right. Now, all, right I, all right. All right. All right. I'm all stressed out. I'm all stressed out. Let's talk about something fun that I like talking about. Let's talk about European Minute. And that starts in three, two, one. Messi's the GOAT. Anybody who says anything otherwise is a liar and they need to stop talking. Could Mbappe be the GOAT at the end of his career? Yes. 
he is the great, I think Mbappe is the greatest right now. But is he the greatest all time? No, he still has to earn that. Messi is the greatest all time. Don't ever argue about it ever again. Ever. The conversation is done. Don't even talk about Pinaldo. It's over. It's done. Messi's the GOAT. Nobody's better than him. I'm so happy that he won. I'm so happy that he won because it just puts a chapter at, on this whole entire generation of soccer that Messi is dominated, he's the best, and there's nobody better than he is. And it was so beautiful. I think what happened at the World Cup today was not only the greatest soccer game to ever happen, it was the greatest sporting event that ever happened. You didn't have to be a soccer fan in, in order to understand what happened today because it was just pure beauty of sport. And that's been your European Minute. My ode to Messi. I hate it when people are like, oh, Ronaldo, Ronaldo. No. No, it's not Ronaldo. Stop. All right, honestly, I had a ton of fun with this bit last week, so I'm going to keep doing it. I think it's a ton of fun. If you don't, then I don't know what to tell you. Here is the entire NFL in one sentence. Each game, one sentence. Eagles, Bears, Justin Field, great cover. Falcons, Saints, who cares? NFC South sucks. Steelers, Panthers, nobody cares. Uh, Cowboys, Jags, we're jagging off. Lawrence is the real deal. Chiefs, Texans, Chiefs, comma, you better keep awake. That was sneaky. Cardinals, Broncos, snooze fest. Could you imagine paying money to go see that game? Patriots, Raiders, if the Patriots had a good coach, they would have won that game. Uh, Titans, Chargers, are the Chargers good? Are they? Uh, Bengals, Bucks, Tom, go away. You're done. You're done. 49ers, Seahawks, 49ers are legit. Are legit. Colts, Vikings, Colts, what happened? Uh, Ravens, Browns, woof. Bills, Dolphins, it was cold. It was cold, all right? Giants, Commanders, it's halftime right now. You both suck and don't deserve to be in the playoffs because the Lions deserve to be in the playoffs. And that's been one sentence for every single NFL game. All right, NCAA, NCAA. Bull season is so much fun, but it is so extremely stressful as a gambler and as somebody that's honestly interested. I mean, the Bahamas Bowl was fantastic. Jackson State was fantastic. Washington State sucked. Uh, it's awesome. Here are some bowl games that I like this coming up this week. Uh, even though it's kind of a down week, uh, every single week I'm going to just point out some bowl games that I like that aren't kind of like on the, like, oh, oh, by the way, watch the Rose Bowl. No, no, no. We're talking money in the crumbs. Uh, Toledo Liberty. I think it's going to be a fantastic game. I think Liberty, without their coach, kind of is like losing their identity. Look out for Toledo to win that game. The Myrtle Beach Bowl, Marshall UConn. Very interesting game. UConn 6-6 six six, hasn't been in a bowl game since forever. Marshall, an amazing year. Exceeded expectations at every single level. Don't sleep on UConn to win that game. And then the Armed Forces Bowl. Air Force is a huge underdog. Five-point underdog. In bowl standards, huge underdog. Don't be surprised if Air Force wins that game. I have Air Force winning that game outright over Baylor. Baylor, an extremely down year. Can't, doesn't get up for the Armed Forces Bowl. Don't bet against the Armed Forces in their own bowl. In the last three times an Armed Forces team has played in the Armed Forces Bowl, they've won the game outright. So just keep your eye out for Air Force. I like Air Force in that game. But college basketball, all right? College basketball is here. I see it. I'm watching it every other night that I'm not doing hockey games. Uh, live stream on Wednesday for uh, Tampa Bay, the Red Wings. Third period live stream. College basketball is one month away from everybody actually caring. Here's my top five. I'm going to do top five for college basketball, kind of like what I was doing for college uh, football. So tell me what you think about my top five for college basketball. Number one, I have to go with UConn. They have looked so good at every single level of the game. They just look un beatable. Number two, Purdue. I love Purdue. I think the Big Ten's the best, and I think Purdue's going to get knocked off in a little bit, but they will be a top four team coming into March. Number three, you got to put Houston. 
Number four, Virginia. The only reason you put Houston at three is because they beat Virginia at Virginia. Very impressive win from Houston. And at number five, look out for him. Tommy Lloyd's getting him going. The Arizona Wildcats. I like what he's building there. And trust me, here in Arizona, you can win a lot of basketball games down in Tucson. Whew. Tell me what you think your top five is. I would love to hear it. All right, mailbag time. Uh, I posted a mailbag. I got one question, one question only, and this will also be my final thoughts. Mailbag. What are your top three Christmas movies? All right, I have an interesting list. I'm not a Christmas movies guy. My wife is obsessed with Hallmark movies. Uh, personally, I can I can take or leave them, but when there's an eggnog filled with a lot of like alcohol, I love it. Or if there's a hot chocolate filled with peppermint vodka or peppermint schnapps, I love it. So sue me. But here are my top three Christmas movies. Tell me what you think. Number one, Elf. I have to put Elf there. Number two, the Jim Carrey Grinch. Now, the cartoon version is fantastic. It does hold up. But I think Jim Carrey's Grinch just holds up better than anybody else. And number three, this one's a little of a spicy take. The year without Santa Claus. I'm Mr. Heat Miser. I'm Mr. 101. Oh, bangers. Bangers, dude. Love that movie. Love that movie. A little claymation. Kind of throw you off. Everybody's, oh, this is live and this is cartoon. Mm. Claymation. Boom. Love it. Love that movie. And it's got, that song is a banger. I was just listening to it. I'm Mr. Heat Miser. Uh, Mr. 101. Oh, bangers. I'm going to listen to that on my car ride to work. Hell yeah. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Make sure you like, subscribe. If you like, subscribe. It's completely free today and today only. If you like and subscribe where you listen to podcasts or on YouTube, uh, if you send it to me, I will send you a picture of my dog or give you a personalized thank you, whether it be a video or a message, uh, however you want it to be. So make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you for listening. God bless. Go to Troy Sports and the Lions, hottest team in the world, not only in the NFL, but in the world. Thank you for listening.